Today, I'm going to create something truly unique, a project no one's tried yet. Are you also dependent on electricity? What would you be able to do without it if it suddenly stopped? Do you have a power bank? And when all the power banks and batteries run out, then what? A gasoline generator is bound to break down. It has limited use, a complex design, and loads of parts. After that, all that's left is a total blackout. Hello, friends. Communication, lighting, water, heating, even the toilet won't work without electricity. And our gadgets will just be useless bricks. A power bank can help, but only for a while, until the batteries drain. I have a small one for jump-starting the car. And a larger one, with all the ports and interfaces, everything can charge and run off it. Let's get started. Here, I've got a small Zippo hand warmer. These have been around for a long time and are pretty popular. They work through a catalytic reaction of fuel vapor inside a catalyst. Heat comes from the platinum catalytic mesh, where the fuel vapor undergoes flameless burning and oxidation. Platinum is an expensive metal, but this uses only a tiny amount. And that catalyst is the core of the hand warmer. Inside the fuel chamber, there's a simple absorbent material that keeps the fuel from leaking and holds it inside. This little warmer runs on gasoline in this case, Zippo lighter fuel, but I've tried regular gasoline too. Fuel usage is impressively low, a single refill, just a few milliliters and it can run for up to 12 hours continuously at full power. After a quick refill, just heat the catalyst with an open flame to get the reaction started. It heats up fast, and in some spots, the temperature gets very high. I'm going to cut off part of the lid so that only the ring that fits onto the chamber remains. Later, I'll trim away anything extra for a neater, more convenient shape. Science demands sacrifices. Luckily, I have another one of these. The main body is going to be made of stainless steel. There won't be many parts. I've had this small piece of 2mm sheet metal lying around. After a quick marking process, I cut out two 40mm squares and three small rectangles, each 15mm wide. Cutting metal is pretty easy and quick, with hardly any sparks. Here's what I ended up with. I tried to keep the original look and not scratch the face side. It's always nice when everything looks neat and professional. These pieces will form a small box with an open side. This whole setup will be welded onto the warmer ring. For now, I've clamped the pieces in place to see how it all looks. I welded carefully. The sheet metal is two millimeters thick, but the ring is just half a millimeter. On the side panels, I drilled two 5mm holes each and made small cuts at the welding points for extra strength. There's no need for continuous welds as the structure is light and won't bear any major load. All it took was 16 welding points. To make it not just nice, but super clean, I polished each weld spot to a mirror shine with abrasive paste. Look at that, I think it turned out awesome for a DIY setup, of course. I won't be using it here, but I'll show you a Peltier thermoelectric element just to get a better idea of how it works. For better heat transfer, I'm using thermal paste to draw heat away from the hot side. During operation, there has to be a temperature difference. Otherwise, the whole element just heats up and might break. The Peltier element converts the flow of electric current into a temperature difference across its surfaces. It runs on 12 volts, powered by my power bank. One side gets so cold that if you drip room temperature water on it, it turns to ice within seconds. This principle powers tons of devices, car fridges, portable air conditioners, water coolers, dehumidifiers, processor cooling systems, and so on. For my project, I'm going to use a thermoelectric element that relies on the Seebeck effect. It's the reverse effect you heat one side and cool the other, generating a voltage difference across the wires. For improved heating and heat dissipation, I'll use a more effective thermal pad 
with a conductivity of 20 watts per meter Kelvin versus the four in regular paste. Speaking of alternative energy, I have other sources like solar panels, which I take camping, but they work well only in bright sunlight. And in our climate, sunny days are rare. And of course, they don't work at night. A mini solar panel with six cells should be able to charge a phone just a little. But honestly, it doesn't keep up. I have a more powerful 20 watt battery with four bigger sections. It works well on sunny days and I use it along with the power bank shown earlier in the video. But it's a bit underpowered for complete autonomy. Recently, on viewers advice, I got myself an even bigger battery. It's larger and much more efficient, specifically for a large power bank. Foldable, flexible, and made of four huge sections. The total max power is 220 watts. Even in cloudy weather, without direct sunlight, it can put out a small amount of power. And the coolest part, it's double-sided. Of course, there are some downsides. It's bulky, takes up space, and is heavy. And the main issue with solar panels is they only work in the daytime. I tested small panels indoors with artificial light. There was practically zero effect. I shine two LED lights on them for filming, each 100 watts. And that's pretty bright. Let's get back to the project before I get too sidetracked. My generator will cool with two heat sinks. I marked where to drill holes to mount them together. They'll attach to each other, bypassing the hot part of the setup so they won't heat up additionally. And the hot part will be compressed by them. There was a minor problem when mounting the heat sinks. I drilled four millimeter holes in one and tapped an M4 thread in the other. But the bolt heads got caught on the fins and I didn't want to damage them. I found a solution. Using a grinder and drill, I shaved down the bolt heads so they fit snugly between the heat sink fins without going through the holes. To make them screwable, I cut slots on the heads with a small disc for a flathead screwdriver. It worked perfectly. Now, all that's left is to assemble and test my pocket energy generator. Later, I'll try adding thermal decoupling for a sharper temperature difference. I'll keep improving and refining it. I can't wait to try it out. Having ways to be more independent in various situations gives peace of mind for the future, something we're all short on these days. Sure, it's just a test energy generator with its strengths and weaknesses. The downside is it doesn't put out a lot of power, but the concept is what counts. The upsides are the compact size, lightweight, long run time on one refill, up to 12 hours. The ability to charge a power bank, it can run around the clock, day and night, and hey, it's warm, so you can warm up a little if you're cold. Friends, as always, if you like this idea, don't forget to hit like. Let's talk in the comments as usual. Wishing you and your loved ones health and good sense. Thanks for watching. See you on the channel. Take care.